reported prowler Collins Street vicinity vicious sandwich shop out. <laughs> Please listen to me, sir. You have the right to remain silent. And I'm going to use it too, baby. You have the right to remain silent. Anything you say can and will be used against you. You have the right to an attorney. If you cannot afford one, one will be appointed. Nurse, excuse me. Could we get someone to take a look at this man, please? What did you do to him? We didn't do anything to him. He fell. Yes, uh, ask Dr. Nagel to come down to emergency admitting, please. Thank you. Is what they said true? Did you fall? Listen, you can tell me. I'll try to help you. Uh, nurse, uh... Nurse Davis, if it'll make you happier, Officer Gillis and I will confess that we beat this gentleman with lead truncheons mm. and then with a backup unit ran over him three times. Four? Uh, four times. And assuming this makes you happier, could you please get this man some medical attention? Hey, Dan, how about using the gentleman? Yeah, just wait a minute. Oh, man. You mean you aren't even going to let the man... All right, all right. Uh, Willie, why don't you take him over and check it out? We don't want Nurse Davis to get the wrong impression. No. Come on. Two minutes by my watch, which runs fast. You're a prince, an absolute prince. It happened at, uh, in an alley, 400 north of Forrester. Time? About 2.35 a.m. All right. That's all we need. Any idea how long this is going to take? Fifteen minutes, I'd say. The cut didn't look very deep. Well, as long as we've got that much time, uh, could you start on another form, please? Who for? Uh, me. I'd like to get some ribs here in my right side x-ray. Our friend there threw a garbage can at me. Really? Yes, really. And. Yes, really, he did hurt himself trying to go over a fence while we were chasing him. And yes, really, why do you assume that because I'm wearing a blue uniform, I'm trying to hurt people? The name is Terry Webster. The occupation happens to be police officer. And yes, really, could we start on the other form, please? Okay, your time's...
description of the suspect is as follows. Male, Caucasian, late 20s, 6 feet, about 165 pounds, wearing a brown jacket and gray trousers when he pulled his Houdini. Lieutenant, we still don't know how he pulled the gray away from the wall. I do. You left him a tool to pry it away with. That's how he did it. You left him a tool and you left him alone. It was my fault, Lieutenant. I told Willie to let him go in. Officer Gillis should have refused. Why did you tell him to let that man go in there? There was this nurse who thought we were being too hard on him. I guess I just overreacted. And you were trying to impress her, right? No, not the way you mean. I just didn't want her to think that we were being heavy, that's all. Well, you succeeded beyond your wildest expectations, Officer Webster. We allowed that man privacy and we allowed him to escape. She must think we're real nice guys now. Uh, look, Lieutenant, don't you think you're coming down a little hard when it's just a case of malicious mischief? If that's all there was to it, yes. But it was followed by an assault on an officer, then the escape, at which point it became a felony. I think there's a lot more to it than that. This thing last night wasn't the only incident reported. I think we're dealing with a protection racket. The problem is we've had no formal complaints. And without that, all we can do is wait until someone gets mad enough to ask us in. Any questions? Do you think there's any connection with the assault on that store owner on 4th Street last week? Very probably. The victim couldn't or wouldn't identify as assailants. It was the same M.O. as last night, though. Anything else? Dismissed. Uh, Webster. Gillis. Um, Fisher's place is in your old neighborhood, right? Yes, sir. I hear he has great sandwiches. I don't know. I haven't been there in a while. Well, I'd like to find out. I missed lunch. Come on. I'm buying. <laughs> More coffee, Lieutenant? No, thanks. I'm sure glad you fellas dropped by. I haven't seen Terry since he became a police officer. How come you don't come around anymore? Oh, just been busy, Mr. Fisher. I used to give this rascal free sodas. Now he doesn't want to visit his old friends anymore. Hmm. He didn't give me free anything. I had to take the trash off for those sodas. <laughs> well, it built your moral fiber. It also got your trash taken out. <laughs> uh, Mr. Fisher, we're not here for a totally social visit. We'd like to talk to you about your window last night. Well, I... I told the detectives everything I could. Did you? Mr. Fisher, sir, we've increased patrols in the neighborhood, but we need some help, some concrete information. I'm sorry, I don't know anything. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have to get back to the counter. I'll buy the sandwiches, I don't buy a story. See, you got your man, best tradition of the department. Yeah, well, I'm afraid I've only got one of them. One of them's going to bail himself out. Who's not staying? I'm not staying. I appreciate the invitation, Joe, but I... Well, Hello. Um, Mike, this is Susan Davis. She works with me at the hospital. Hi, Susan. Ah, oh, this is... That's okay. They've already met. Um, Susan was the nurse on duty the night... Uh, well, how do you say it? Well, I, what, the nurse on <laughs> duty when... The guy... Oh, when the guy... Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, that's the way to say it, I guess. <laughs> You don't do anything, Amber. You don't do anything. 
Good job. Doing it. Requesting a code seven at 400 North Forester. Can't make hey, it was just some TV sets. Nobody got hurt, at least. Not physically. Guy's insured, isn't he? Well, the uh, two bit crime is like paying taxes, only in reverse. The poor always pay a higher percentage than the rich do. You take 100 grand from a millionaire, it might hurt, but it's 10%. These guys take 25 bucks from a guy who maybe clears 100 a week. And the guys they're taking from just cram up and keep paying. Because they don't believe we can do anything to help, right? And maybe they know what they're talking about. Ludlow Niner, OK, your code 7 request. Roger, Ludlow 9 out. Should we eat? Four of us. Uh, just a cup of coffee, but that's all. I uh, like to watch my calories. Everybody in the whole world is on a diet. Whatever became of good, honest fat? How about you, Cal? You're young enough to take on a few calories. Just coffee, Mr. Fisher. Well, all right. You probably have to hurry back to class. Oh, no, Mr. Fisher, not my little brother. He's decided very cleverly not to finish out the year. So I start that now, okay, Susan? I uh, guess that will be all, Mr. Fisher. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Play an instrument, Cal? No, what? Uh, that case, I thought it was a clarinet or a piccolo. <laughs> Hey, Terry, uh, guess again. The man's got his own pool cue. Uh. Cal, uh, are you, uh, are you any good? I have my moments, I guess. That means he's good. When you're complimented, Cal, you say thank you. <sighs> well, that depends on who's doing the complimenting, I'd say. Cal. Look, I don't want no coffee. I'll see you back at the place. I'm afraid I have to apologize for Cal. I think some of my attitude rubbed off on him. Is that still your attitude? Hey, listen, I really am not wild about the police and some of the things they do, and that's a fact. Yeah, I dig it. Maybe that's one of the reasons why I joined up. Pick up over here. I'll get it. Oh, how much do we owe you, Mr. Fisher? Uh, that'll be $2 even. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you.
So you think this kid, Cal, could lead us to something? It sure looked that way, Lieutenant. Get him in here. Let's have a talk with him. There is nothing definite except that uh, Willie saw them both together. I think it needs more checking into. What do you have in mind? I have no specific idea except that why don't you let someone else handle it? For what reason? I just don't want Susan to think that I'm using her. I like her. Not well enough, apparently, to try to help her brother. If he's guilty, she's not going to think that I'm trying to help him very much. If he's guilty, you may just find out that he's innocent. Gillis, don't tell me you're on my side. Neutral observer, Lieutenant. There's no such animal, Gillis, not in a squeeze like this. The assignment is yours, Webster. Dismissed. He had me going there for a second, though. Yeah, I almost got you, didn't I? Yeah, you sure did. Maybe next time, huh, JJ? Cal? Talk to you a minute. What about? You got into a blue charger after you left Mr. Fisher's yesterday. We were wondering who was driving. Who do? This dude got a last name? This dude, man. Anything else I can do for you? This is where you uh, hang out, huh? No, I don't hang out here, man. This is how I make my bread. Only you and Mr. Gillis here are standing around in those uniforms killing my action. This is how you're gonna make a living? I don't think you're good enough, Cal. Well, suppose you tell me how you know what's good enough and what ain't good enough, huh? Well, it's uh, your ball, Willie, and uh, I don't know what you're going to do with it, but uh, don't lateral because this is one game that I don't. <laughs> well, you haven't answered my question. What makes you such an expert, Willie? Uh, we had some tables set up in the student union where I went to university. Student union? <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right, Student University. Tell us all about what happened at the Student University, Willie. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll tell you what happened. Let's see now, this is, uh... Four and a half by nine slate table, 15 balls. I figure it's the same game I played when I was in school. Now, are you all mouth or can you shoot some pool too? How about a little nine ball for five dollars? Well, I'd be happy to. But uh, see that sign over there, Cal? It says no gambling. Chicken! <laughs> Come on, put your money where your mouth is, pig. <laughs> okay. Straight pool. 
150 points. Call. Kids. You got it. Need any more of those, Danko? I got enough of my own. This is what the lab turned up on that paint can, Lieutenant. Prints traced to a David Miller, AKA Dude. Record goes back about five years. All petty stuff, but all involving muscle. Well, it looks like Dude here might fit into a protection racket just fine. The question is, who's paying him? Well, we got enough additional men on the street. Shouldn't take us too long to find out. To our satisfaction, yes. But to find out with enough evidence to take him into court, that's gonna be hard. You think so? I know so, Danko. These guys are pros. They're not gonna make any mistakes. We can't afford to make any either. It's not a game we're playing. Nine. Ten. Hundred and forty three for Cal, hundred and forty seven for Gillis. Game's over. You think that you have found easy money? Tread lightly, brother. Hey, Cam! 
forgot your jacket. Hey, somebody put some money in the jukebox, okay? Good. Just hope that what happened is good for Cal. Terry, he had to be taken down a peg or two. He'd hang around here for the rest of his life, nickel and diming. Maybe, maybe. But even that is an identity. I just hope that we didn't take away the thing that he counts on, the thing that he answers to inside. His thing. Because he'd go looking for another answer, and it could be worse. He's already found that answer. Looks just like the paint they cleaned off of Fisher's window. We suspect that Cal might be involved with a protection racket that's been rousting small businesses in the neighborhood. Comes the dawn. That's why you've been seeing me, just to gather evidence against Cal. No, not so. I don't know what to think anymore. All right. Don't trust me if you don't want to. Don't trust any cop. But hear me when I tell you that your kid brother could be heading for trouble. Now, if you believe that, and you don't want our help, get someone else's. A friend, a social worker, a psychiatrist, anybody's. But don't let it go on, Susan. Because the games that they got him playing now could get a lot rougher, a lot rougher. Give me time to think, please. All right. I'll call you tonight, hmm? Oh, I can't make it tonight. Some kind of concert. They're pulling a lot of the guys in from street duty to funnel the people in and out. I'll call you tomorrow, though, hmm? Fair enough. Listen, I'll talk to Cal when he gets home. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, what can I do for you, Cal? Look, Mr. Crater, I'm tired of hustling pool for next to nothing. And I was just wondering if... Yeah, I, uh, I know what you mean, Cal. It's gonna be difficult for me to set up matches for you when people find out about you being taken by that cop. But, uh, is there anything else you can do, Cal? Look, I can do anything you want me to do, Mr. Crater. I've already been helping dude out sometimes. Have you? Well, I like a man who's trying to get a little more out of life. Here, go to these addresses. Just uh, tell them you're collecting. They'll understand. Something wrong? Can't you read my handwriting? No, I can read it fine, Mr. Crater. Just fine. for you today? Uh, I'm not sure. Well, I've got a menu longer than your right arm. So if you don't see what you want, you just pick up that Mr. menu. Fisher, I came to collect the envelope. What did you say? The envelope. I came to collect it. Now they're sending babies to collect from old men. Well, let me tell you something. I don't have that much money to pay. Nor that many years to be afraid of. Mr. Fisher, the people I work for, they're not playing games. Oh, yes, they are. 
Let me tell you how it works. First, they throw paint on my window. Then I have to pay $23 to have it cleaned off. And now they want me to pay $25 a week to them. Well, I just don't have it, young man. Squeeze me, you get turnip juice, no blood. Mr. Fisher, there's going to be a lot of blood if they don't get their money. I mean, if it was up to me, I'd try to help you out. I don't agree with what they're doing. Yes, I can tell you don't agree with them. That's why you're here, isn't it? Get out. I don't want to look at you. There's one missing cow. Or did I lose count? Uh, yeah, um... Well, Mr. Fisher, he couldn't pay. Couldn't? Couldn't? That's a strange word, Cal. Couldn't. I don't, uh, recollect hearing about any bank holiday and the dollar's still fairly sound. You sure you don't mean won't pay? Look, Mr. Creeder, when I ask him, he just... You don't ask. You tell. But he's an old man. He won't be for very much longer. <laughs> you know, you're, you're right, Cal. He's a tough old bird. I'll uh, have to speak to him personally. Yeah. Oh, on your way out, would you tell dude I'd like to see him, huh? Sure. I'll send him right here. Creator wants to see you. You gonna make it to the rock concert tonight? Nah. I don't think you are either. I expect you'll be painting tonight. Oh, man, the streets are full of heat. Creator knows that. No, not tonight. They're all gonna be over the concert tonight. I heard one of the cops tell my sister. Oh, yeah? And a sign. Officer Terry Webster there. Yes. Oh. Then how about Lieutenant Riker? Riker speaking. Uh, Mr. Fisher, I think it's time we had a little talk about an adjustment in your insurance policy. Officer Danko. Hello. Mr. Fisher? We don't have much time. We'd like a description of the men who beat you up. You mean you didn't even see him? I 
I know you've been through a terrible experience, but you can help us prevent it from happening again. You can't stop them. They even know whether you're on patrol or not. Lieutenant. Just a minute, Mrs. Danko. What did you mean by that? They warned me. There will be no pigs on the street tonight. And they were right. I screamed, but nobody came. Lieutenant, that's enough. Wait. Dr. Donahue, call 276. How is he? They said they were going to punish him, and they did just that. Somebody tipped those clowns to how many men we had assigned to the concert. They knew they had a free ride. No. Not a free ride. They just haven't paid yet. They will. You forgot to knock. You hurt that old man. It's in the papers. No, the paper says an old man got hurt. Didn't say anything about me hurting him. You almost killed him. Did I? Well, if I did, I'm sure he had it coming. Hey! Now, come on, Cal. You got me all wrong. I'm in the insurance business. Just so happens I have very aggressive salesmen. Yeah. Well, I want any part of it, you understand? I quit. Oh? And? You lean on me and I'll put you right out of business, huh? All right, let him go. We don't need the action in here. Come on, Terry, we're wasting our time here. The place is clean. Yeah, I guess you're right. Be something we can do. How'd they know we pulled off the extra patrols because of the concert? Somebody must have told them. Like we told Susan? Like she maybe mentioned it to Cal? Maybe. Why don't we talk to Cal? Yeah. Yes, sir, we will. Yes, sir, as soon as possible. Right. Riker wasn't there, but the captain wants Cal brought in. Please, Cal, what are you involved in? Cal, can you identify the two men for us? Well, I'll never forget them. I don't know whether it was his name or not, but one of them was called Dude. Dude? Isn't that your old friend with the dark blue charger, Cal? Isn't it? I worry about you, Cal. I mean, if you don't care about your own life, how about your sisters? Hey, look, don't worry about it here. 
I'll handle it. You're past the point of handling anything. You work for that man, right? And you want to do a really uh, good job, right? But one way to do that is to see the results of your hard work. Come on, you're going with us to the hospital. Today, Mr. Fisher. I'll survive. I'm good at that. Can you handle a few minutes talk with a stubborn old Irishman? <laughs> I knew you'd be back, Lieutenant. But you can come back tomorrow or the next day or next year. The answer will still be the same. I just don't care anymore. Fisher, I don't care. Look, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's all right, sir. Look, don't give up, huh? Don't let him do this to you. What do you want me to do? Testify about the man who attacked you. What about him? Why can't he testify? He can, Mr. Fisher, but it won't be of much value. We need an eyewitness, and that's you. Besides, he hasn't agreed to testify. Afraid. <laughs> yeah. They hurt us both, son, because they wouldn't let us be men. They took that away from us. Maybe together we can get it back. Let's go to work, Webster. Jill, could you do me a favor, please? Yeah. Call the precinct to ask for Sergeant Kiner. Tell him that we need a stenotypist in Mr. Fisher's room as soon as possible, okay? Right. Search warrant? We don't need one, friend. It's a public place. Uh, well, where do we go from here? They're probably headed out of town by now. Why would they do that? They don't know that we're looking for them. Wait a minute. What room they got old man Fisher in? 4361. Uh, no one get too excited. Uh, J.J. has a gun in his pocket, and if we have to, we'll kill all three of you right here and now. And being killed would spoil the rest of this beautiful day, no end. And that's the truth. Cal, old friend, take Mr. Fisher in his chair while I promenade with your pretty little sister here on the way over to the parking lot. Hey, has anybody been in to see Fisher? Um, just Susan and Cal. Staying there now? Uh, no, I, I th think they went for a walk out on the ground somewhere. Okay, let's move it. You call right. Parking 
parking lot. I'll go this way. To, but uh, all we had at school were regular pool tables, so I never had a chance to play any snooker. Well, I'd be more than happy to teach you all about the game. You won't have time to teach anybody anything, mister. You'll be too busy hitting those books. Hey, look, I'm just trying to make myself a little extra lunch money, that's all. Yeah, well, Mr. Fisher promised you some kind of a discount. I don't think it's right. You should be hustling my partner. Hey, what is this? No one seems to consider the possibility that uh, I might win. Uh, no, it's not that, Willie. See, it's not that we didn't consider the possibilities. We did, and Jackie did. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't you okay. get what you're going to eat, tell me what you want to drink, and I'll get it for you. Break out the beer. I'll have a beer. 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 A beer? A beer? I'll have a beer, too. <laughs> Say what? Hey, look, uh, I'll take it to go. Pick it up in about two years. You got it. You got it. That's it. <laughs> 